Okay, so we now have some DXFs that we've generated in our software of choice. Uh, this year we've been using Onshape a lot because we are distance uh, most days. So we are going to bring in that DXF that we generated in Onshape. And if it doesn't look quite right, it doesn't look like our actual object, when we bring it in, we did something wrong. Go back and watch that other YouTube video and verify you did it correctly. First step, I'm going to click Import File. Now I'm going to go out and find that file that I was working on. I call it BoxWrench MK. Hit Open. Okay, sweet. It came in. I don't have to rescale it. That's because I dropped it back to that version uh, 2018. It brought it in real nice without any funky polylines, and it's not scaled down to millimeters. Beautiful. Okay, this is where I could also make duplicates. Okay, whatever you so wish. Then if you wanted to nest parts and save time, you could rotate one and you know mess around with all this whatever you wish so let's rotate this 180 degrees Ciao. okay just for example okay now remember that this whole bed that you're seeing right here is an actual bed that's on our wazer okay so if i place it right here that means that i'm going to have to make sure that my stock is screwed down and at least inside this grid that's two down and two over. Okay, Try to move it around too. Don't always put it in the same spot because that uh, plastic corrugated bed gets pretty beat up and cut up. Okay, So I'm going to leave this right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move my way through the WAM setup. Okay, So next I'm going to choose my material. This particular wrench I am using a 6061 aluminum and that has measured out to 0.25 with my dial caliper. Great. Okay, I'm then gonna choose my cutting path. I want this to cut on, let's say, the outside of these lines, and that's really just determining where our kerf is gonna be. So the is gonna remove a little bit of a kerf and turn some of that metal into little tiny particles of metal that go out with the sand. So you just need to make sure that that kerf is being taken away in whatever direction you prefer. Uh, we can have a whole nother side discussion about kerfs and laying out cutting paths and manipulating these. For today's assignment, we're simply going from a part to, uh, or some kind of artwork, which we've made our wrench, to an actual part. Okay, so we just wanna get some G-code out of this today. So I'm gonna choose outside for this particular project. Tabs and leads, okay, remember the tabs are just little spots that are going to not be cut out so that our pieces don't go flying everywhere with all the water flowing and moving around. Okay, so you could automatically place these tabs, put two in. Uh, this is really kind of a thing on experience. You want as few as you need so you don't have to cut and file them later. You also don't want this thing blowing all over the place. So we're gonna try with this and see how it works. Typically the automatic uh, tab placement's just great, okay? Uh, next thing we're going to do is discuss leads. So leads basically will start your pierce out away from your part and then bring the cut to it. It prevents your part from having a little tiny divot where the water pierces and then kind of makes a little bit bigger of a, a kerf right there where it starts. Uh, so a lead is important if you uh, have a part that you want to be really, really nice. Um, if you don't really care and they're just like spacers or something, don't worry about them. Okay, uh, I'm going to disable leads for this particular product and I'm going to click cut. Okay, this is really up to you and once you whip out some prototypes, you can manipulate how you want to do this. Uh, fine is just going to go a little bit slower, use a little bit more sand. I use fine most of the time just because uh, I'm already waiting, you know, 30 minutes on a part. What's another, whatever, 10 minutes. So. This is just up to you. You can land wherever you want on that. And then we click generate job file. Now this is gonna be your actual G code. Make sure you save that somewhere that you can find it and title it something that you will know. Okay, MK box wrench cut. Because when we throw that on our SD card and walk up to the Wazer, you're only gonna see those file names on the Wazer screen doesn't have any images or anything like that, and that flash drive's gonna be full of other people's, or that SD card's be full of other people's 
uh, parts. So you need to be able to identify these pretty quickly. Okay, so that is that. Uh, if you are going to make many edits uh, or like try to do something similar, you are currently using the lab version of Wham, not like my version. So you might want to take like a little snapshot or like pictures or screenshots of maybe some of these settings you've done or jot them down in your handy dandy notebook so that you know what you did when you go to cut apart again in case it didn't work or it worked great. Uh, just, you know, some kind of record keeping is is valuable in this instance. And now we're ready to walk over to the Wazer and turn that on. Okay, that is all for today.